This presentation is about a surgical technique to reconstruct the separated acromioclavicular joint in a chronic situation. Six types of AC joint dislocations have been described. Of them, the type 1 and 2, they don't require a surgical intervention. Type 4, 5, 6, which are severe injuries with significant displacements, obviously require surgery even in the acute stage. Whereas the type 3 injuries in which there is complete separation of uh, the distal end of clavicle due to the rupture of uh, AC and CC ligaments is always subjected to debate. In my practice, most of these patients of the type 3 injuries undergo conservative treatment at first and they are all re-examined later. And if they show any signs of pain, dysfunction, scapular dyskinesia or a significant cosmetic deformity, they are offered a surgical reconstruction. When you want to do a reconstruction of the AC joint in chronic situation, certain surgical principles have to be followed. Number one, I always excise the lateral end of clavicle because this reduces the incidence of pain due to impingement, which may occur because of a, a horizontal instability or a posterior impingement or due to an over reduction. And second, the repair or reconstruction should be biologic in nature. In this case, which I'm going to show, we'll be using semitendinosis tendon to reconstruct the coracoclavicular as well as the acromioclavicular joint. And almost always, these biological grafts need to be protected in the acute stage by the incorporation of an internal brace or splint in the form of buttons or tapes or in some cases the tendons can be reinforced along with uh, non-absorbable suture tapes or sutures. The AC joint reconstruction in a chronic situation is a combination of an open and arthroscopic procedure. It is carried out with the patient in the beach chair position at around 45 degree. We can call it as a semi beach chair position. The C arm is required to verify various stages of the procedure. This procedure starts with an excision of the lateral end of clavicle, then the clavicle is reduced and fixed with KOS, then an orthoscopy is carried out to facilitate the application of a coracoclavicular place, which is normally uh, using dog bone buttons, which are tapes. Uh, the grafts are passed from anterior to clavicle and under the coracoid, then from uh, lateral to the coracoid, then on to the posterior aspect of the clavicle. And these grafts are crossed on top of the clavicle and then they are secured with multiple sutures using non absorbable material. And then you can see here a limb of this tendon is purposefully kept longer which is taken through uh, the gap between the clavicle and acromion. Then it is taken through a 4.5 millimeter drill hole made in the acromion. Then the graft is brought over and then once again it is crossed with the corresponding limb from the top of the clavicle and then it is sutured using multiple non-absorbable sutures. And in this technique one has to know uh, the shoulder orthoscopy is carried out to start with on the posterior portal. Once the undersurface of the coracoid is cleared and access is, has been established, then the weaving portal uh, is shifted to an anterolateral weaving portal. And one modification which you may notice here is the anterior portal is made slightly inferior to the normal position for what we use during a shoulder instability repair. This low anterior portal position helps us uh, in accessing the under surface of the coracoid much more easily than a standard anterior portal which would have been established much more higher and lateral to the coracoid. These diagrams illustrate the surgical technique. Coracoclavicular internal brazing is already done using dog bones and suture tape and then using an orthoscopic trocar. A soft tissue conduit is established in front of the clavicle going through the soft tissue and entering just medial to the coracoid. Alongside this uh, trocar, a knot pusher loaded with a suture like an antibone suture is introduced. Then the suture is captured with a grasper and taken out and parked outside the portal. Another trocar is introduced posterior to the clavicle 
which exists just lateral to the coracoid an outpusher loaded with a suture is introduced and one more suture is retrieved and parked outside now these sutures which uh, come from either side of coracoid are tied to the uh, whip switches which are applied to the grafts in so that the graft can be pulled uh, up through the portal and the graft will be under the coracoid and one limb will be exiting anterior to the clavicle one will be exiting posterior to the clavicle this is how the patient is positioned you can see the patient is in a semi chair position and the opposite limb is draped uh, the knee is draped for harvesting of the semitendinosus tendon it's very important to have a good access to the CM because various steps of the procedure like drilling, position of the button, reduction will have to be checked under CM guidance. This is a 55 year old gentleman who came to us after four months following an injury. Initially his tibial condyle fracture was treated and the shoulder injury was neglected. He presented with pain, severe shoulder dysfunction and a very prominent cosmetic deformity. See all the landmarks are marked. Uh, and uh, this is a incision, an horizontal incision is made spanning the lateral end of the clavicle. The markings for the level of excision for the lateral end of the clavicle. And you can also see another line which, uh, which is roughly around 25 to 30 millimeter from the lateral end of the clavicle. And this uh, mark is made, this is going to be the starting point for drilling the coraco clavicle tunnels. And this is a exposure of the lateral end of clavicle. As you can see, using a diatherapy, marks are being made for excising the lateral end of clavicle. And also the sharp posterior superior corner of the lateral end of clavicle is also uh, will be excised. You can see this is the excision of the lateral end of clavicle. And this is the excision of the sharp posterior superior margin. Excising this sharp posterior superior margin of the clavicle uh, will prevent emergence of pain due to posterior impingement then the clavicle is reduced and it is held with a thick k wire which is passing through the acromion and then on to the lateral end of the clavicle this fixation provides stability for the shoulder uh, as we carry out our arthroscopic procedure and uh, coracoclavicular drilling and etc so this is an arthroscopic view the rotator interval is being clear using diatherme and then the undersurface of the coracoid is being exposed. Now the scope is shifted to the anterior lateral viewing portal and then the aiming device for the coracoclavicular drilling is uh, placed. And it's very important at this point to note that uh, before you start drilling, uh, an unicortical drill hole is made on the superior surface of the clavicle uh, around 25 millimeter from the lateral end of the clavicle. This unicortical drill hole provides a resting point and a holding position for the bullet of the jig here. So uh, you have stability when you are drilling your coracoclavicular drillers. And also, you may remember that we have fixed the clavicle with transacromial K wire. This K wire also adds to stability. Otherwise, it will be very difficult to drill through a floating clavicle without any control. And here the coracoclavicular drilling is done using a 3 millimeter cannulated drill bit. Drill bit has got a threaded pin which can be removed. And through the cannulation, the nitinol wire is passed through the drill bit which is retrieved from under the coracoid and it is kept outside the anterior, anterior portal. And then the suture tapes, which are loaded with uh, a dog bone button, is pulled so that the button is staying under the coracoid and the suture tapes pass through coracoid and then through the clavicle exiting on the superior surface of the clavicle. One may want to fix the coracoclavicular fixation at this stage also. Now you can see with the help of a trocar, we are creating a soft tissue conduit coming anterior to the clavicle and uh, exiting in the, on the inside, just medial to the coracoid. And alongside the trocar, you can also see there is a knot pusher which is uh, used to deliver a suture to the medial aspect of coracoid. The sutures are retrieved through the anterior portal. Now the trocar is passed behind the clavicle and in such a way that it uh, 
enters inside just lateral to the coracoid. Similarly, a suture is passed and taped. The sutures are tied to the ends of the graft and the semi tendinous graft is pulled. The graft is coming around the coracoid and one limb is coming anterior to the clavicle and one limb posterior. As you can see, one limb of the graft is get purposefully longer. Now the grafts are crossed over and then they are sutured with uh, multiple sutures of uh, zero fiber wire. The superior aspect of acromion is exposed a centimeter from its medial end. A K-wire is used to uh, start a tunnel. which is over drilled with a 4.5 mm cannulated drill bit and retinol wire loop is passed which is exchanged for the bond loop. The ethy bond loop now carries one end of suture limb through it and then this lengthier limb of semi tendinosis tendon is pulled from an inferior to superior fashion and then the two limbs of the remaining tendon are brought upon each other and crossed, tensioned and then they are once again fixed with multiple number zero fiber wire switches. So this is the x-ray of the patient showing good reduction and one can also see the space between the lateral end of clavicle and the acromion as because of uh, our excision of the lateral end of clavicle this uh, avoids unnecessary pain due to lateral or posterior impingement and one can also see the nicely positioned uh, dog bone buttons on top and below and all the patients are given sling for a period of six weeks uh, they don't uh, do active movements in the first six weeks but passive movements by an attender can be started from second week onwards after six weeks they go on to do active assisted then by around eight weeks uh, active movements so there are multiple techniques uh, have been described to address the situation and no one is working in all the patients uh, but what we have described here is a simple one which can be reproduced uh, it follows the biological reconstruction principle it adds an internal brace in the form of cc fixation and it also addresses uh, the acromioclavicular joint stability thereby both vertical and horizontal stability is maintained with these patients